Let's go ahead and get started with um, our hot topics portion of today's um, webinar. And Dr. Bentz, do you want to start off with just a brief overview um, on how phase two is going in our remote learning plan? And then we will pass it off um, to members of your team. Kimberly Waltman is joining us and Krista Carlene to talk about different things going on in their area. Sure. Thanks, Corey. So um, phase two is going pretty well. Uh, Everybody's starting to get into their groove. We are, uh, you know, get district people are getting those, uh, the, the curriculum out to folks, special education's getting their eyes on it, putting their individualization, individualization into it. And I'll let Kimberly talk about that in a minute. And our teachers are, um, are using it to develop those, those daily lessons and, uh, and activities and exercises and assignments for our students to do. So, um, so yeah, I feel like people are starting to get into the routine. We're identifying, working to identify any hiccups with, with connectivity for families and things and working our way through those. And uh, the learning's happening in LISD, Corey. Thank you for asking. So let's talk to Kimberly and Krista a little bit about it. So Kimberly, we get a lot, we've gotten a lot of questions and we know we have a lot of viewers and, and parents out there of students who receive special programs. Um, do you want to talk about what that has looked like on, on phase two and what you want to share with our parents and viewers at home? Yes, I would love to. Um, every day, uh, our coordinators and our teachers are sharing amazing examples of the ways that they are meeting our students' needs. Um, we are continuing to send out lesson plans um, every single Monday for every single student based on their individualized IEP. Um, some of our teachers are going above and beyond and even sending those out on Friday the week before so families can prepare for Monday. We recognize that this is new for our families and new for our students so we are um, extending grace and relying on our parents to give us some feedback so that we can support our students along the way. Um, so those lesson plans will continue. We're continuing to collaborate with general ed. Um, we are working with related services as well. Um, this is all looking very different. Um, we are providing direct services for some via Zoom. Um, we are providing some activities that are asynchronous opportunities for students along the way as well to continue their learning. Um, we are continuing our support with our parent group. Um, you know, we have parent conferences and support groups that happen throughout the year. Um, we know that we love that and we know that our families do as well and rely on that support from each other. So we're continuing that work um, with our parent group and actually next Tuesday there's an autism support group. Um, and lastly, we are working on reporting out student progress and what those progress reports will look like um, as we're navigating this new phase two. So things are going really well. Um, our teachers are rocking it. Um, they are thrilled to see their students and work with their students. Um, we truly miss them all. So have to give a shout out to our coordinators and our teachers and our instructional assistants as they are doing amazing work to support students and families during this phase two learning. And, and Krista, in, in your area, in your neck of the woods, given that you have kids that are in advanced programs who are doing dual credit, they're preparing for AP and IB, um, and then you have CTE classes. What have some of those classrooms and experience looked like? And are there any, um, any updates or things that parents should know um, with regards to some of those, those non-core those non -core courses, especially at the high school level? So um, the dual credit courses should be up and running um, through, the, through Canvas. Um, so students are checking their online uh, work and continuing to submit assignments that way. OnRamps has submitted a modified um, a syllabus for that particular course to your high school teacher, and so the high school teacher is helping to distribute that. Um, again, you need to be checking online and submitting your assignments because those um, are continuing to uh, be looked at um, for your college credit as well. So those two things are continuing to roll. CTE is working as best they can, especially for our students who are wanting to uh, do some of their certifications and who had those plans in the works. So um, our teachers and coordinators are working to make sure that you have that opportunity and to see what that could look like coming um, later on in the summer as well. Um, in addition to that, 
I just want to encourage our families to be checking the SAT and the ACT website as they are still trying to figure out what they're going to do about their June testing and beyond. Right now, there is still some tentative testing um, available in June, but that is all dependent on the testing sites and whether those testing sites will be open. And so I know that there's been some questions that have come through regarding SAT and ACT, and the best place to get that information is on their websites as um, uh, different places and different testing centers um, are closed and um, have not made a decision if they'll remain closed or will reopen before that June site. Um, so that's just kind of a general overview of what we're doing in our area. And Krista, uh, overseeing counseling, and we know all of our counselors are busy working and providing services in our remote learning and have provided some resources. Um, as someone who's experienced recent technical problems, we know that even technology can bring great stress. Um, anything you want to share from a counseling services standpoint to our to our families? Absolutely. We know that this is an interesting time for our families, both um, our students and our parents out there. And so the counseling team has been um, working um, hard and diligently, and they are wonderful in providing those services for your students. So they will continue to be able to reach out, make sure kids are registered for next year. But in addition to that, we have some health and wellness section on our parent hub. So if you have not visited our parent hub yet um, on our website, I encourage you to do so, um, especially for elementary age students, but others as well. Um, our counselors work very hard to put some lessons up there that families can use, some different activities that they can go to, to be able to just kind of work through this stressful and unique moment in some of our lives to make sure that we uh, remain healthy, both not only physically, but mentally as well. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And that's at leanderisd.org slash COVID Parent Hub. Um, that's how you get to all of those great academic resources and those counseling resources as well. Dr. Arterbury, you got something to say about technology. Y'all loved giving out devices so much. You did it for two extra days. Do you want to share an update on device distribution with our families for elementary school students? Absolutely, Corey, and I'm sorry you've had I'm sorry you've had some technical difficulties today. But um, our amazing Leander ISD Information Services team has been working hard behind the scenes. As you know, we were able to distribute about 4,000 devices last week to elementary students. Uh, we deployed from all 27 campuses, and we're excited to get these devices into the hands of our students. Um, we are are offering uh, right now at um, Winkley Elementary, a uh, device pickup opportunity until 6 p.m. And then we have another opportunity tomorrow at Reagan Elementary from 3.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and some of you may be wondering why the focus on elementary and not just secondary. Um, our secondary students have had an opportunity to participate in our MLISD program for a few years now. And we are proud to say we have about 20,000 devices in the hands of secondary students. And so we um, are continuing to support those through our Leander ISD help desk. Uh, we encourage any students and staff who are struggling with their technology or just need a little bit of assistance to contact us at 512-570-0506 or they can always submit a ticket online. And we want to send a shout out to our client services team for all their hard work uh, managing all those tickets and making sure that our staff and students are getting what they need. Um, I know there have been a couple of questions that I have received regarding hotspots and uh, families who may not have reliable access to internet. Um, please know that we're continuing to look into this option um, and we will be uh, exploring every possible option that we have out there. We will be sharing information as soon as it becomes available. So um, hold tight on that. We have not forgotten about that and I promise you we're still looking into it. Thank you, Laura Lynn, and for sharing the information about the help desk and how people are still working even now to help get students' devices fixed. My problems were all self-created, not of anything device and my own internet Wi-Fi. Um, Mr. Graham, um, a lot of people are still asking. They want to know questions about spring events, graduation. We have some seniors on our panel today. Um, anything you can share on spring events, graduations with our community? Yes, as you're aware, we did cancel all events for the month of April, um, but as we move into to May, uh, we are continuing to, to receive guidance from our government officials and our health uh, officials on what school could look like in May. 
Uh, and so at this point, we have not canceled any, any May events, um, but we are constantly looking at uh, every option if events do uh, do get canceled uh, um, in May. I met with the high school principals today to specifically talk about graduation and other events that impact our seniors. And we are working uh, to create plans that we'll be able to hopefully share uh, in the near future on what graduation could look like if we are not to, uh, not able to, to hold that ceremony in May. But it is a, a very important to all of us uh, that we find some type of way to celebrate our seniors and, and to ensure that they have opportunities to receive the recognition that they, they have earned over the last uh, 13 years of school. And, and so it is something important to us, and we are working on what, the, what graduation could look like if, if we do have a disruption uh, into the month of May. Uh, but no, it is important to us, and we are working. Uh, we have two more meetings scheduled next week, uh, as, as principals and myself to work on this and, and it is important to us and our seniors are at the forefront of every conversation we have because we want to make sure we are, are, are doing everything we can to, to honor them. So know that uh, as of now, no events in May have been canceled, uh, but if that does occur, we are working on plans to move forward so we can still honor our graduates at some point in some type of way. Thank you for sharing that, John. I know it's in the hearts and minds of so many kids and so many families and so many students. Um, and our principals are working hard. On Monday, on our day off, it was like 5.30. I was taking a walk with my son, Chris Simpson, literally principal Lander High School, running through my neighborhood on the phone, talking about work. He can't even take a break to, to get his run in these days. Superintendent, Dr. Gearing, I think, do you want to, can you join us now and give a little message to, to start us off before I, I feed you a couple questions? Hi to everybody, and I apologize for my technical difficulties. Uh, to put it in perspective, I was talking to my teenagers this afternoon about my first computer, which had a 40 megabyte hard drive and a 12 inch floppy disk drive, and it could probably have handled about one second of this video conference that's happening right now. And uh, there was no thought of Facebook Live or anything like that. As I was reflecting this week, uh, a little over three weeks ago, the week before spring break, we had 41,300 odd students and about 5,000 staff members physically in our buildings doing the work of public school in the great state of Texas. And within a week's time over spring break, we pivoted 180 degrees, and now we have 41,300-odd kids and 5,000 staff members working remotely from their houses in isolation in order to stay safe and stay healthy and stay well. Um, and as I think about that, that pivot is just incredible. And so I, I have to just say how amazed I am at the ability of our employees, of our kids and our families to not only physically and technologically um, make that shift, but also mentally because this really is a different world that we're living in today than it was just three weeks ago. And with the, the future being so uncertain, um, I, I really just want to reach out to people and say, you know, it, it feels a little surreal to me. I'm sure it does to you too. And know that we're in this together, that Leander ISD is a huge organization and that means we have a lot of resources we are a human capacity organization and that means we rely on connection and while we have somewhat of a connection i'm really looking forward to the day that we're able to be back physically in the same spaces together again and so with that corey i'll turn it back to you well sir you were on a roll there and then my dog started barking so i decided to turn the camera off and kick the dog out of the home office <laughs> and let you finish i apologize for missing the end um for those who don't know uh the governor is expected to make an announcement sometime this week regarding schools um i know bruce you've been in a lot of conversations and in conference calls with local superintendents 
Um, the commissioner has been holding conference calls. What do you want to share with um, people at home in terms of what you're seeing on this thing from the state level? Yes, um, it's, it's really hard to predict what's going to happen next. Uh, and this is completely my opinion, and I'm surmising over much of this as I am over much of anything that's happening these days. But it appears to me that uh, naturally, there's a lot of pressure from an economic standpoint to get us back to business as normal as soon as possible. At the same time, there's a lot of unknowns in, on the infection and the medical side of this thing that doesn't allow us to really understand what happens as we start to plan to go back to normal. Um, the only things I know for sure is that we're closed until May 4th, according to the governor. Um, and on Friday, he'll give us some indication of how that may change, whether that will extend or um, whether we'll start to try to develop a plan to physically get together again. Um, and so, unfortunately, we have no definitive answers. That's part of the stress of this situation. Um, but we're going to try to be as honest and as transparent with you as we can as we go through this um, in order to keep you as informed as possible. And now, Bruce, we have a um, we have a board meeting tomorrow. We have two board meetings next week. Next week, um, we had some outstanding items um, prior to this that were unrelated to COVID when all of the the school and building shutdowns occurred. Um, anything that you want to share about um, what people can expect out of our board meetings coming up in the next couple of days? Yes, um, we are going to try to streamline our board meetings as much as possible, and we are only taking care of absolutely necessary items in those meetings. Um, but there are some necessary planning items for the 2021 school year that we have to accomplish. And so we actually have three meetings coming up in the next week or so. On Thursday, we'll be meeting for our agenda review meeting, um, and no decisions are made at that meeting, just to remind people. Uh, we will be discussing all the items that will appear on our regular agenda meeting the following Thursday. And in between those two meetings, we will be having a budget workshop with the board. Um, we still have to plan for a budget approval of June 30th. Um, it'll actually happen at the, at the second June meeting of the Board of Trustees. Um, the board has been fantastic through this entire process. They've been extremely flexible, but at the same time, they've been very decisive, and that is absolutely necessary in these uncertain times that we have strong leadership from our governance team. And so I want to reach out and say thank you to all of those board members um, for the incredible work that they're doing to help support us through in this time. Um, it's very difficult to make decisions when you can't see each other's, uh, well, you can see each other's faces, but you, you can't read body language as well. You can't feel the room. And so um, that even adds to the stress of, of the situation that we're in. Um, you're free, of course, to continue to visit our board meetings. Those are broadcast live, um, and we encourage you to listen in um, and pay attention to, to what's going on and the decisions that we're making. Uh, one of the items that you'll see on the agenda for this coming Thursday um, is in a discussion-only mode right now, and that is the triple bell schedule for 2021. Um, so I ask you to pay attention to that. Um, we'll be having a discussion with the board only next Thursday about this issue with the view of bringing that back to the board for decision in May um, so that we can prepare adequately for the start of school in August. So for, the, for those who aren't aware what Dr. Gearing is referring to, uh, earlier in the year we did a survey and we have had lots of presentations in our board meetings about adjusting bell schedules. One of those things would allow us to do a triple tier routing um, which would allow less bus drivers to cover more routes and hopefully make um, transportation more efficient. Um, but the cost of that is being as having to adjust the way that we normally do bell schedules and weighing the, that issue. Um, so that'll be discussed later um, this year. Um, and there's some other components to that as well as there's an instructional need at elementary and at high school um, to have additional minutes built into the day to beat some, meet academic and, and teaching and learning needs as well. So with that, the one technical thing that seems to have worked today is we have six amazing high school students who are here and they're gonna talk to Bruce and I and I'm gonna need someone to do a tap dance while I move the technical component of getting them in for their video and then I'll let them introduce themselves.
Dr. Vince, do you want to hang around and do a song for me? Uh, sure, I'm taking requests. But before I do that, I do just want to put a plug in for all of the kids out there that are doing the work that their teachers are assigning to them. Just a reminder, parents, kids are getting assignments now and activities that they are expected to complete and submit. And most of the kids are doing it. And if you're not, please start turning it in or you'll be having uh, some very uh, close Zoom conversations with your teacher and your parents sometime in the near future. But just shout out to everybody that's, that's getting it done and doing it in their, in their rooms and wherever they can find the place and the time. Looks like we got some high schoolers here, Corey. And with that, I'm sending you back to where you can't talk. Kids, do your homework. That's a message from our chief academic officer. Seriously, we, um, we understand that these are tough, and t tough times. Um, our teachers are working hard to provide learning opportunities for kids, and we just hope that all of our students are, are doing as best they can. Um, we know that these are challenging times for everyone, given the, the national job loss, the health crisis that we're in. Um, and on that very exciting note, we want to talk to six high school students um, from all six Lander ISD high schools. How are y'all doing? Do you want to introduce yourselves one at a time? I'm going to call on you one at a time for you to introduce yourselves like we practice. Let's go ahead and we'll start with Gabby. Hi, I'm Gabby Hammerbach and I'm a senior at Leander High School um, and I'm a captain on the tennis team. And then we're going to go to Avery. I'm Avery Smith. I'm a senior at Rouse High School and I'm the editor-in-chief of Raider Rumbler. Welcome Avery. Good to see you again. Gigi. Hi, I'm Giselle Muniz and I'm a junior and a broadcast student for Cedar Park High School. Welcome Giselle. We love having you here. Israel. Hi, I'm Israel Ramirez. Um, I'm the drum captain at Vandergrift and I'm the vice president of Spanish Honor Society. Awesome, awesome, welcome. I don't know the way I was doing this is gone. There it is. All right, Harveen. Hi, I'm Harveen Gar. I'm a senior at Mr. High School and I'm the current student body president and senior class secretary. Awesome, thanks for joining us. Josh, how are you doing, sir? Good, how are you doing? My name is uh, Josh Russell. I'm a senior at Glen High School. I'm a track athlete and the president of a writing club. So Bruce, I know you have your own students at home. What would you like to ask or know about from our students? They're gonna raise their hand virtually and I'm gonna go ahead and call on them. Um, but if Bruce, you wanna start off and, and feed a question to our student panel. Thank you, Corey. Um, well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here today, and it's really great to see you. So tell us, what is what has been the most challenging thing for you um, at this time as seniors in high school with really having your spring semester of your senior year essentially taken away from you? Tell, tell us a little bit about how that feels for you. All right, we're gonna go to Giselle. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Gabby. Um, the hardest part for me has been everything not being as I expected and not being normal. Um, I haven't gotten to see my friends on Friday nights. Um, I don't get to go to work on the weekends. I really love my job. Um, I don't get to go to practice and see my teammates. So just everything not being the way I expected has been really difficult to process and understand. Israel, do you want to share or add on to that? Yeah, so just coming off of like a really competitive like band season in the fall specifically with like a lot of structure and like organization with like after school rehearsals multiple times a week to basically having to do it all on our own um, at home remotely through all the assignments that we have as well as like trying to keep up with our music. Um, I guess in the band world specifically has been a little bit difficult just because there's not that much structure that we would have seen in the fall. So just the independence aspect of it's been pretty difficult to kind of adjust to. Harveen? Um, I think something that's pretty difficult so far is that 
uh, so I'm involved in a lot of clubs. And so we've been preparing all year for certain competitions and stuff like that. So with the cancellation of a lot of these, um, our, a lot of our clubs do have Zoom meetings where we catch up, but it's not really the same. There's a lot of different situations that we don't know how to address because you don't have enough information. And because most of us in the clubs are seniors who are going to graduate, we don't get the chance to do what we've been doing the whole year, possibly ever again. So that's a little bit difficult to understand. Avery, is there something you'd like to share as well? Um, yeah. Um, it's just, uh, so I'm part of UIL academics and like how we're having to adjust to not having things anymore. Uh, UIL, it's been postponed for right now. So we have been practicing through the whole entire year and it was supposed to be in April and through May for like districts and regionals. And so that's just like really hard to like see all the memories from last year and then like know that it may not happen this year and we, like none of us get the opportunity to even try to go to state this year. And there are several of you who are who are competing in things in the spring. I know Josh, you're a track athlete um, and all the different things going on. Um, Bruce, did you have another question you want to you want to feed the students? Yes, I do. Um, you know, as seniors in your spring semester, most of you are looking forward to the transition to your next step in your careers. And so tell me a little bit about your thinking about next year and and how you're planning, you know, that transition. If you've applied to colleges, most of you have been accepted at various places. Um, but may not have selected your final choice yet or may have. Uh, talk to us a little bit about, you know, what's going on in that transition. Um, so I'm going to be attending East Texas Baptist University in the fall. Um, I'm going to be playing tennis there, and my major is biology. Um, I am just a little nervous about my AP exams because I was relying on some of the um, scores to get some extra credits there. And I don't know how I'm going to feel about an online test. And I was, I'm really hoping for those credits. But other than that, I'm pretty excited about getting to be on my own. Avery, I see you have a hand up too. Would you like to share? Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to the University of Texas in the fall. And um, we just found out that uh, our freshman orientation is going to be online. And so that's a little difficult for me because I don't know a whole bunch of people that are going there. And so I thought freshman orientation was where I was going to be able to meet all of my friends. And so now it's like, I don't know how that's going to work with everything being online. Harveen. Yeah, so I'm currently narrowing down my choices for universities, but most likely I'll be attending Rice University in the fall. And so what I've heard recently is that a lot of universities are suggesting that the guidelines that we currently have for social distancing and to keep ourselves safe because of the pandemic is gonna follow through at some type of level. So that's what I'm a little concerned about is that how in August, hopefully the situation is better than what it is now, but how things will function at a collegiate level because it's a lot of students in one setting and that I don't know how safe that will be in August because right now we're all at home, but it's kind of weird not knowing exactly how college is gonna start because we've always grown up with the assumption and the expectation that we're gonna attend these events as a freshman and do these activities. But it's kind of all up in the waters right now. So that's kind of difficult to comprehend. Josh, what are you thinking about for your, your transition out of high school? What does that look like for you? Yeah, so um, I'll be going to uh, UT Austin, and we'll, we'll hopefully in the fall. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a little difficult because uh, it's not as as expected. Um, like orientation is now online, and for the honors program, we were supposed to have this um, induction type ceremony. I don't think we're gonna have that now, and so it's just kind of weird going into such a big thing like college without the, the regular aspect of it. Avery, we've connected you with 
with Josh. So there's two Longhorn freshmen. Are you guys going to do a, a, a hook them horns for us real quick? There you go. There, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you would have needed the freshman orientation in, in person. Um, so, Gigi, you're in a unique situation. You're, our, you're a junior. Um, so you're not at that point where you're getting ready for a transition to school, but you're in that point where I know it's, it's crunch time um, for, for grades and things like that. How are, how are you doing right now as a junior knowing that you're transitioning to that big senior year? Um, I am a little uh, stressed and concerned about like some of like my grades, not necessarily my grades, but like I would like to, I wanted to like take the, SAT and the ACT again and I'm not sure how that's gonna work and also I I am a little concerned about like the grading and the GPA for this semester because like as I read in the emails it's not going to like our grades for this semester is not going to count towards the GPA which is I don't think it's too much of a problem for me but usually like I've noticed that I always do better on the second semester than the first so it's just a little frustrating even though I understand that the district is doing all they can and everyone's doing all they can to like make things good for their students. So I want y'all to be able to ask Bruce a couple questions because we have the superintendent here. I know that and he can weigh in on this if that's a question you want to ask him. The, the grading thing I think was probably one of the hardest decisions that we had to make. Um, I know that our teaching and learning team and our principals weighed lots of different things, but at the end of the day, this, this thing hits people in different ways. Um, you know, I, how record and it went from record unemployment in this country to record um, low unemployment to record high un unemployment. And, and it just seemed hard to kind of keep, keep con expecting that normal, I think with grades for everybody not knowing how it was going to impact every student but we definitely understand man working really hard as a, as a student and getting ready that's, that's got to be tough um and we under we understand that that's also um yeah it, it's just an unfortunate situation do any of you have a question for bruce or bruce were you about to say something yeah i, I just wanted to jump in on that if i could because those decisions are so so difficult and sometimes when you're just watching from the outside it appears like you know we show up in a board meeting we present something we chat about it for a few minutes and then we make a decision but there has to be an understanding that there's been a lot of churning that's happened behind the scenes in order to get to that point in time um, I wanted to make a point about that too are there any students um, with us today um, who are in the IB program no okay no IB so, so that that's that's okay because we do have a lot of IB students in the district and um, this is the kind of pressure that we're under when we make decisions um, because we don't know all of the consequences of our decisions all the time and so you know AP has gone online with their tests and you heard that mentioned a minute ago um, but IB canceled all of their tests and so those students who um, we're hoping to get college credit to IB now no longer have that opportunity and so that has um, a significant impact on those students and their families um, not just with college credit but financially too over time and so um, you know those are consequences that might or might not have been considered when that decision was being made um, and so we're very conscious that that as we make decisions there are consequences for people and we don't take those lightly we're trying to do the very best we can for the majority of people but we do know that that our decisions are never going to be perfect and so yeah. we apologize ahead of time if somebody gets hurt by a decision that we make uh, we're trying to make a preponderance of good decisions over time so that uh, the health of the organization and of as many individuals inside the organization as possible yeah. Uh, remains and that we can pick up the pieces afterwards and help each other through this incredible stressful time. I'm, I'm excited to answer some of the kids' questions. Yeah, do you all have any questions for Bruce? You want to go ahead and just put, click the raise your hand. It could be on this topic. It can be on any topic. We'll start with Israel. Yeah, so I was just curious if any of the stuff that was going on regarding like the plans for this year was going was gonna to change the flow of things going into next year. I know that um, 
especially like being a junior or sophomore freshman. Um, obviously, this year was an ideal situation, and I don't think people expect it to go exactly back to normal right away. So I just I was wondering if there were any plans moving forward for like the future years to come with more permanent, um, I guess, things. That's, that, that's a really, really great question. Um, and I'm going to be as open and transparent and honest with you as possible in saying that I honestly don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, never mind what's going to happen in August. But I will tell you that I suspect that things will look different in August than they have in any other August that we've had so far. And so the start of school will be different. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But what it looks like exactly, I'm not sure. Um, as we learn new information, uh, the governor is going to make an announcement on Friday at 3, I believe, um, that will affect uh, how long we're closed for now. Um, but even in August, I suspect that there will be students and parents who are still fearful about coming back to a normal environment. And so uh, we're having to prepare for the eventuality of perhaps having some students in school and some students not in school, um, but still meeting everybody's needs. And so we will continue to make those plans. We will continue to consult as many of our students and our families and our faculty as possible in making these really difficult decisions um, because the input that we have um, is, is absolutely critically important to us. And so even, even this discussion today helps inform us as we go forward. So that's a great question. Of course. Thank you. Josh, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was just wondering um, with graduate, I know there's, there's not really a way to have a definite answer to this, but um, with the graduation ceremony, is there the possibility if the stay at home order goes past May 4th, would the district be considering the possibility of say graduation just being postponed further or do you think they'd, they'd cancel it? That's also a great question. Um, we, uh, I know uh, John Graham has been working on this issue and so I'm gonna let him address that question directly. So he talked about it a little bit. He's an attendee right now, so he can't he can't respond in here. And basically, what John was um, told us earlier in the show was that um, they're looking at all different different scenarios and solutions. Josh, um, I know principals are all trying to figure out their way um, that they could make it happen. I know that they're committed to finding a way to make sure we we recognize seniors in whatever way we can, and I think that does include opportunities to postpone it. Um, if possible. I think everybody wants to be able to have um, a traditional graduation or as close as we can and everyone feeling safe in that graduation. So I know that there's an array of things that he's that we're looking at in principals. So over the course of the next two weeks, John mentioned that there's some meetings that principals are having as we continue to get more information. And then I think the announcement from the governor on Friday is kind of looming over all of us as we're waiting to hear um, what he's going to say um, about jump-starting the economy, and he said specifically about addressing schools. Um, so thank you for asking that question. Avery, you had your hand up next. Um, so LISD has just entered phase two of online learning, and I just was like curious if we were going to have like, um, like if it's, that's like a permanent for the like the rest of the year, will we enter like a phase three or a phase four of virtual learning? So again, um, uh, Dr. Bent and his team have built uh, an incredibly robust phase two, and we foresee being able to extend that out even if we have to get through the end of the year. Um, we're focused really on making sure that we keep connected with all our students, and hopefully you feel that way, um, that your teachers have reached out to you, that you're having interactions with them, that you're interacting hopefully with some of your peers in your classes. Um, and that the online work is meaningful for you. So we want to make sure that you are mastering as many of the standards as possible so that we can get through the things that are absolutely necessary in order for you to be successful when you start your next phase. If you're a senior, you know, your first year of college or, or uh, whatever you're going to be doing um, next year, and then for the rest of our students, you know, their next grade level. And so we've you know, built out as robust in phase two as we can. I think phase three for us would probably be um, what happens if we have to have a hybrid model of some kind in August. And by hybrid model, I think you mean, Bruce, just to be clear, if there's, 
there's been talk of, of having opportunities for kids coming in in August and also who kids who want to change home. Because I, I think the big thing is everyone wants people to feel safe. Um, so even in August, you know, no vaccine. We, we were talking about flattening the curve and all, a lot of the science that's coming behind this. Um, will people feel safe even if, if we're asked to open our schools? Absolutely. Arvine, you had your hand up. Yes, so this is just a quick question about what August may look like. I know it's far away and right now we're thinking about the present, but hypothetically for uh, students who are not seniors or who are going into high school, any year of high school, um, is there a possibility, even the slightest possibility that school may start itself at a later date or will it typically start on the same day, but start online if that's what worse comes to? So we, we will, of course, defer to the direction that we get from the governor and then the commissioner of education, um, depending on what happens. But our plan as of this moment right now is to start on time in August, preferably in person and everybody safe and well. Um, but if we have to be online, then we'll certainly start um, on our regular calendar start date that's been approved already um, and try to get back into what would then be phase three of uh, remote learning. Um, right now, we're calling it emergency remote learning because we're still trying to figure out how to do it well. Um, hopefully, by August, if we still have to be online, then we'll be a little further along with uh, making it work better. Um, but for sure, we don't want to shortchange any student the opportunity to continue to get an excellent education in Leander ISD. Giselle, you had a question. Um, we're going to have enough. We're going to take about um, one or two more questions for Bruce. Um, we're going to be able to do this next week. We're going to be announcing some dates and times for next week where we're going to have these open Zoom calls for students and staff specifically. We'll, we'll do it in Zoom. Um, where people can sign up to attend and ask questions and we're going to open it up to a broader student base so please feel free to students or parents watching at home make sure that you talk to your kids and, and have them look out for those links and those invitations so that they can join and have an opportunity to ask their questions as well. Um, Giselle do you have another question for for Bruce? Yes um, this is kind of similar to what we were talking about earlier about schooling August and grades I was wondering if we start schooling in August and we need to do it online, will it, will it continue to be like it is right now with the semester that the grades will be incomplete or passing or will we get grades like we normally like used to do it or how is it going to work when, when it comes to grades in August? Like what do you think is going to happen because we know that no decisions are final currently. That's a really great question. Um, I think by the time we come back in August, if we have to be online, then we'll have to be in phase three, which will have to be much closer to um, what our normal reality would be. So I would anticipate that by August, if we're still online, then we will be back to, to some kind of a grading system. I, I would suspect that it might be a little different than what we've done in the past. Um, and I think, to be honest, we have a great opportunity here to do things a little differently. Um, and it's an opportunity we've been thinking about um, even before all of this change happened. Uh, and so this gives us a little catalyst to push us a little further down that line of making sure that students are, are really mastering the standards and getting the skills that they need to be successful and happy in life. And so we will be working extremely hard over the next couple of months and then into the summer to make sure that when we come back, students are presented with the best learning experiences possible. So it just, again, reflecting just on this conversation, it dawns on me that, um, and I'd love for the students to just think about the fact that um, they're about to end, most of them, you know, they're 12 or 13 or, or, or so years of public education or of, of K-12, private education, whatever that is, ending up in a public school. Um, and the poise of our students online tonight um, is just incredible to me. The, the ability and skills and talents that you present are clearly evident. And 
I just want you to think about how far you've come and to think about the support that you've had in that time from your parents, um, from your teachers, from your administrators, and from your school district and from your community. Um, and I just want to give a huge shout out to public education because um, we are tasked with helping any student who walks in our doors, no matter what. And I believe we do an incredible job of that, not just in Leander ISD, but across this great state. Um, and so I want to give a huge shout out to all of our employees. Um, I know they're having a stressful time too, uh, but they're doing incredible work behind the scenes to connect with our kids. Um, so students, thank you so much for coming online tonight and, uh, and showing us just how amazing you are. All right. With that, it looks like all of our questions that we got that came in were responded to individually in our Facebook chat. I want to thank all of you students for connecting with me and, you know, about a day's notice um, and making yourselves available for this. Please help us when we shout information. I'll share it to y'all directly. Um, we want to get as many students who can ask some of these questions next week when we have a bigger Zoom and have uh, opportunities for more students. Um, so please look for that and help us share that message. Um, for those who, uh, who want to share this um, video after the fact, we will put it up on YouTube. It'll be on our podcast network tomorrow. Um, and we'll definitely have some highlights to share out. I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, we have an amazing performance we're going to share with you all as a separate video um, that was queued up and ready to go. Anybody, we want to make sure anyone who missed their spring performance or any student who wants to share something, um, we know we're missing art shows, we're missing choir performances, we're missing stage plays. Um, uh, Flipgrid.com slash li perform LISD. Flipgrid.com slash perform LISD. You can submit your video. Um, we're sharing some of those here as well on our shows here on Wednesday. Um, we just want to give you all an audience because we know that you worked so hard for some of those performances. Um, so again, thank everyone for joining us and we're going to go ahead and sign off here. Hi, my name is London Kowalik and I will be performing The Walrus and the Carpenter today from Alice vs. Wonderland. I'll be playing the Dormouse. Okay. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said it would be grand. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. Oh, oysters, come walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. The walrus and the carpenter. 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 And the carpenter. Go ahead. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> the eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave his oyster bed. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head. But four young oysters hurried up all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because you know they hadn't any feet. And this was odd because you know they hadn't any feet. The walrus and the carpenter. Walrus and the carpenter. The 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 walrus and the carpenter. and the carpenter. I wait for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size. Holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But the answer came of none. And this was scarcely odd because they eaten every one. And this was scarcely odd because they eaten every one. Off with their head. What? <laughs> and scene. Thank you. <laughs>